In today's video, we're going to be going over a $100 astrophotography setup versus a $5,000 astrophotography setup. We're going to be comparing a regular tripod with your phone versus a decent star tracker, a go-to star tracker, and finally revealing a Skywatcher EQ6R, which is a observatory grade tracking mount to get you some precise and accurate astrophotography tracking and give you some amazing shots of space. You guys might be wondering that there's some weird guy lurking behind me. That, my friends, is Ryan, and I am not in my regular backyard. <laughs> He's in my backyard. And instead, we are here to bring you guys the full experience of different astrophotography setups. So you guys can decide when you guys want to start doing astrophotography, or if you already have one of these setups, what you can really acquire with each and one of these setups because the results vary and it all comes down to you how much you want to spend to get the results that you want. Now, of course, the setup doesn't mean everything. You can obviously mix and match and the skill of your processing skills really give you the image that you desire and you want. So buckle in, guys, because me and Ryan are here to bring you guys a video of an $100 to a $5,000 astrophotography setup. Let's get going. So the first stage and the cheapest option for an astrophotography setup really only comes down to about $100 and it's also the easiest. This is with a standard tripod such as this one and your phone which you should already have. Assuming that you get a nice setup, this cost for taking pictures of the night sky only comes down to about $100 and that's if you have a really good tripod. My tripod that I'm using to film this video was about $100 and before that back in the day I used to have a tripod that I used with my phone to take long exposure astrophotography. Sure, the pictures weren't anything as mesmerizing as the deep sky astrophotographers or any of the pictures like NASA takes with their James Webb Space Telescope, but at least it is something to set some groundwork to go for. It also removes the cost of spending too much or putting all your eggs in one basket before you really wanna dedicate yourself to the hobby. For example, if you spend $500 on a telescope and you decide that you, so for example, if you decide that astrophotography is not for you and you just spent $500 on a telescope and another 500 on a star tracker, well, you're gonna come into a little bit of some financial problems. Because new phones have a long exposure mode, a lot of the Apple devices have long exposure mode for night photography, you can eliminate the cost and dip your feet into astrophotography and decide if astrophotography is really free without breaking the bank. All right, what's up guys? Bit weird to be on this channel, but here we go. I'm here to talk about stage two of your astrophotography kit. This is one that you're gonna get into once you start getting a little further down the black hole that is this hobby. In terms of image quality and the experience that this is gonna get you, the difference between stage one and stage two is bigger than any of the other jumps. This will be miles better than just shooting with a stationary tripod and your phone, and we'll get into why right now. The sort of meat and potatoes of the entire setup is this right here, the mount, the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i. If you've seen any of Tanner videos or any of my videos on my channel, you know exactly what this is for. You can't beat the Star Adventure 2i on the market. This has been the dominating star tracker for so long. And basically what this does is it counteracts the motion of the night sky due to the Earth's rotation. When you're at a long focal length like this and you're zoomed in on your target, you're taking long exposures. When you have that shutter open for a long time, eventually the sky is going to start to rotate and your images will come out blurry. We like to call those star trails in the astrophotography world. But with this mount counteracting the rotation, it actually rotates along this axis over time at the exact same speed of the night sky or the Earth's rotation if you wanna get technical. It's quite literally a game changer for these images. So the Star Adventure 2i and a sturdy tripod can't be beat for this price range. Then as for the camera gear, we just have a stock Canon SL3. This, the specific model of camera doesn't matter. This is meant to be symbolic of any sort of entry-level DSLR or mirrorless camera that you can get your hands on. Get one for 150, 200, 250 bucks. Um, they're super cheap. You can get some for lower than that if you're lucky. Any camera that you can get in the past 10 years will be a thousand times better than shooting with your phone. It will give you manual control. It will give you the ability to process your images like you can't with most phones. It's just so much better. The lens is a kit Canon 70 to 300 millimeter. Every single camera brand has one of these. It is just the entry level kit lens. A lot of them actually come with the camera. So if you get a kit together, uh, you'll often get this with your camera body, which is pretty nice. And the sort of cherry on top of everything is this thing right here. It's an intervalometer. This one's a little bit fancier. It's by newer, it's wireless, but you can get one for 20 bucks on Amazon. So this entire kit for stage two will place you anywhere from 500 to 1000 bucks, depending on how well you play your cards. So I'll let Tanner take it away with stage three. 
All right, so now we are going to dive into a setup that kind of takes into the next step of astrophotography. And the main reason for this is that we're going to include go-to functionality now. This setup ranges between $1,500 to $2,000. And even though that sounds expensive, if you're really turning into an intermediate to experienced astrophotographer, this might be the perfect rig for you to have at home in your backyard or to take on a dark sky trip or consider this as a travel rig. The featured mount is the Skywatcher Star Venture GTI, which like its predecessor, the Star Venture 2i, this one has the same payload capacity and is a small lightweight Star Trek. It holds 11 pounds, but the difference between this one is that it has go-to functionality. Now, what is go-to functionality? Go-to functionality refers to the use of go-to. It finds objects in the night sky for you, which completely takes away from the struggle to find objects in your light fluted backyard by yourself. It comes with a SynScan app and it allows you to track the night sky in both RA and declination. It also opens up the availability of auto guiding for the first time in an astrophotography setup in this comparison. It allows you to have an astro camera, a telescope lens, or a small telescope to photograph deep space for the first time in great detail with a lot of the basic astrophotography needs. On top, we have an example of a lightweight refractor, which is the Skywatcher e Evo Star 72 ED double refractor. This is a telescope designed for astrophotography. We also have light pollution filters built into this setup, which adds a little bit extra money to the cost, but trust me, it's just as important as having the star tracker. We then have the ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro on this setup, which is a budget astrophotography camera, which will allow you to peer through a lot of the hydrogen alpha and O3, so you really can see a lot with this camera. This will help you achieve the deep space pictures, and you'll also reduce a lot of the noise with that built-in fan there to cool the camera down. This is a great setup to take with you as a portable lightweight setup. And this is gonna be one of the setups that we'll be taking to college because we can't lug around big setups. We need portable lightweight tr star tracker setup. And luckily for us, this one includes all the electronic engineering. So we're able to take our deep space pictures on the go. Next, we're gonna talk about the Skywatcher EQM setup, which is a little bit more hefty. Let's get into it. This is where you're going to start to get into the more advanced levels of astrophotography. This whole kit is going to include a mid-range full astrophotography mount. This is out of the Star Tracker range now. We're going to use the same telescope and camera setup as the previous setup, Stage 3. But now we're going to include a field flattener that has an Optolong L-Pro light pollution filter in between the camera and the lens. So that's going to help block out more of that light pollution if you're imaging in your backyard and get you a little bit better of an image for a couple of hundred extra bucks. The mount specifically that we're using, you've seen it a ton if you visited my channel. This is the Skywatcher EQM 35 Pro. It has full go-to functionality just like the Skywatcher GTI. Uh, it does come with a higher cost though and it comes with less portability. This is more of a permanent setup, maybe a drive here and there. So why would you pay a similar price when you're just getting more weight? Since the mount head is much heavier, Skywatcher includes a much sturdier tripod way sturdier than anything that comes with the GTI. And the main reason that you want to pay more for a mount like this is the payload capacity. The Skywatcher EQM35 can hold exactly double of what the Skywatcher GTI can hold. So the GTI does 11 pounds and the EQM35 here does 22. And the final difference between this setup and the one beforehand is that when you get into this sort of level of astrophotography kit, you want to upgrade your processing software. Something like PixInsight is perfect for this. It's a one-time purchase of a couple hundred bucks and it will take your astro images to the next level. The basic contrast enhancements with free software can be good. PixInsight offers astro-specific tools that will really enhance the contrast and details in your targets. All of this sounds great, but there's upgrades that you can make that can take your image quality even further. The ultimate astro setup. And that's what Tanner's going to be covering in stage five. This telescope setup now is roughly $5,000 and if you have made it to this point, you are very rich and you are dedicated to the hobby. This might have taken you years to build and this is the part where you're going to be really satisfied with what you image. You're going to take some great astronomical shots and this will be a great permanent setup for your backyard. Now before Ryan talks about the big EQ6R mount that is towering over us, we're going to talk about what's on the top of the setup here and here is my Apertura EDR 60mm ED doublet refractor. Yes, even though this is definitely undermounted for this setup, the cost of the telescope is roughly $550 crazy, right? Well, the reason for this is because of the same reason why the other telescope, the Evo Star 72, was so expensive, and that is because this is a doublet APO refractor. This is another telescope that's designed for astrophotography, and I got this as a kit 
with the guide scope attached onto it as well and the field flatteners. It comes at a nice NATO focal length of 360 millimeters and the guide scope paired with a small guide camera like the ZWO ASI 120MC will give you some great guiding and astronomical images of space. You also want a good astro camera with a decent sensor size in this range of telescope value and perfect one for this rig is the Player One Artemis C Pro which is kind of a hidden gem in the astrophotography world. <laughs> Bro, what is that? <laughs> it's hissing at us. This camera was roughly $800 when I bought it and this includes the IMX 294 sensor which does have that amp glow that people are really annoyed at including this guy but it does make up for it by its big sensor size. The telescope also includes a dual speed focuser so you won't have to worry about any of that funny business. Alright, so this beast that you see here is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. It's top of the line mount for its price. It's a best seller, similar to that Star Adventure 2i. Just way bigger, way heavier, and more expensive. It can hold 44 pounds, basically future-proofing you for anything you want to do, from an amateur setup like this to a full observatory. It has superior tracking accuracy, and when you slap an auto guider on it, it gets even better. You can't see it, but in between the camera and the telescope is actually a much better filter. The Optolong L Ultimate. The Optolong L Ultimate is, like it says in the name, the ultimate light pollution filter for astrophotography in the city. It blocks out the maximum amount of light that it can and gives you the ultimate amount of signal in your target. Another thing we haven't talked about yet is the thing that Tanner's getting out right now. It is a mini PC. Both of us use the same one on our channels here. This is the Mealy Quieter 3Q. Tiny, it's inexpensive, and it's great for what it does. You slap this onto the top of your telescope, on the side of your mount, underneath, anywhere you want, and you plug everything in via USB-C, and you can remote into this computer and power your setup from anywhere you want, basically, on your phone. I use this on my setup, like I said earlier. It has never let me down, and for a couple hundred bucks, it does exactly what you want it to. It prevents you from having to drag your laptop out on that table and risk it. And the final thing that brings it home is the image processing software. PixInsight is something we talked about earlier, but combine that with some other ultra high-end plugins for Photoshop and PixInsight, Blur Exterminator, Graxpert, Noise Exterminator. All of these plugins will give you the best of the best results in your image processing because taking the picture is only half the battle. Likely, you spend more time behind the computer screen after the fact of editing, so that is just as important. So hopefully you guys have a good accurate representation of the basic stages of astrophotography from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four to finally a big observatory class expensive astrophotography mount stage five which gets into about five thousand dollars which in this case will give you probably some of the best results that you can ever ask for in astrophotography given the skills and the software and years that you've acquired from experience even though the most expensive astrophotography setup can give you the best results it doesn't always come down to money you can get some great shots with a setup that's definitely much less cheaper than this one it all also comes down to what you want to photograph for example if you want to photograph galaxies in the night sky then maybe choosing the eq 6R with a larger telescope to help support that weight is the best option for you. But if you're a wide field astrophotographer who likes taking wide areas of space like in the constellations of Cygnus, then maybe using a small lightweight tracker with a small telescope is just what you need because you don't need a big EQ6R to do that. The point I'm trying to get across is you don't need to blow your money out on astrophotography setups, but if you need to, then that's what you have to do to get what you want to do. You can also get some great shots with an $100 astrophotography setup like using your phone and your tripod. So the point is, with any setup that we mentioned and discussed, you can take some great astrophotography shots. You don't have to spend your money on all these. We will see you guys in the next astrophotography adventure. Now I'm going to go head over and get some Chick-fil-A. Clear skies to you all. Peace!